Somebody has to worry in chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19. And somebody needs to read for me from 19. We'll start 1 through, let's go 1 through 14. Okay. All right. Two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way from in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, they ate bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, from the young and old, surrounded the house. They called a lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to, to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind them and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with, with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do what you like with them, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, This fellow came, came here as an alien, and now he wants he wants to play play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward right down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled, pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons and law, the sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against, the outcry of the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons and law who were pledged to marry his daughters, he said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons and mom thought he was joking. Okay. okay. Huh? That's weird. Yeah. I know. The sons of Allah, um, a lot of sons were now Solomon and Gomorrah. We're going to look at Solomon and Gomorrah. Remember what happened before that the angel of the Lord showed up with, uh, so we see Jesus and two angels. They showed up and remember with Abraham, Sarah, and made a promise. And then, and then, um, said he was going to pass judgment. He, he, told, he told them, should we reveal, remember we talked about that God reveals to his children what judgment's coming, and he revealed it to um, Abraham. So Abraham knew, God said, I'm going to pass judgment on, right now, on Sodom and Gomorrah. So we have, there's two pictures that we're going to look at here. The first thing is that this is all relevant to everything we see here as a principle to end time things, okay? The first principle we'll see is that God's, um, because of unrepentant sin, God's wrath is coming in judgment. Just like we see in Sodom and Gomorrah. And two, until the righteous are removed, God can't pass judgment. Which confirms the rapture. Okay? So a lot of people don't believe in the rapture. But you see the principle carried out through the whole Bible. God never passes his wrath. Judgment of his wrath when the righteous is there. Okay? We were just talking about this. Right. Now what we, wanted, what we want to get a picture of again... Because when we read this, as we go through this, I'm gonna, we're just going to do an introduction first week. You know, we've gone through laws, but we need to get this picture in our head, all right? Again, what's going on? Sodom and Gomorrah, beautiful place at this particular time. It was like the Garden of the Lord, remember? But the Garden of Eden. It was beautiful, okay? So we want to picture what's going on, going on here, okay? Now, another thing we need to understand, too, this has only been 450 years since the flood. At this particular time. This is, this is happening really quick. This is happening really quick, okay? So that's kind of a principle. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 26. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17? Yeah, 26 through 37. And um, Jesus talks about talks about this. It's very interesting. So you can see that Jesus brings this, uh, points us to, to this story here about his coming. Okay? Uh huh. Seventeen twenty-six through thirty-seven. I'm gonna have Karen read that for me. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, married, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house 
with his goods inside should go down to, the, to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember, Lot's wife, whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Where, where, Lord, they asked, he replied, where, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. So, we see Jesus speaking here, and he mentions two things. That the, we talked about, in the, um, like in the days of Noah. And then notice one thing he says. It's a command. Remember Lot's wife. He didn't say remember Abraham. He did not say remember Lot, but who did he say to remember? Wife. Lot's wife. So he's referring to this story. Okay, we're going to look at that. Remember Lot's wife. He didn't say remember Lot. Or Psalm of Gomorrah even. Remember Lot's wife. Okay, very interesting. He does mention, uh, now Christ brings this story to Sodom and Gomorrah. He brings it to the last days, just like the days of Noah we talked about. And they'll just be, in other words, people just be carrying on, just going on with their regular life, okay, as if nothing's wrong, okay. And then who shows up? Then he shows up, okay. Now, um, also what we want to look at too, like I said, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, there's only been 450 years at this point now, okay, till um, God decides to do judgment. So the fact is, in Jude chapter Jude verse seven, go to Jude seven. We remember to study in Jude seven. Uh, right before the Revelation, we studied this. Jude verse seven. There's only one chapter. He says. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. When we studied Jude, if you remember, they were listed as what? As someone who wants to know. They were apostates. What's an apostate? Someone who claims to be a Christian but isn't. No. Apostate was somebody who was... Walked in the truth at one time, and claimed to know it, and now they've walked away. So somebody who completely knew the truth, somebody who knew God. We see examples of the, the angels. They were in the presence of God, and now they're apostles. It's not somebody who never knew God. So these, Sodom and Gomorrah, very much knew God, and they knew the truth. Now, this is all relating to what we look at nowadays when we look at this. Okay, let's go to um, Romans chapter 1. Eighteen, and um, I, I want to read this whole right here. I know it's sentence a lot, but I want to read it to you because this is what he's referring to. Um, Romans chapter eighteen. Yeah, chapter one. I'm yeah. I'm sorry. Verse Let's start with twenty-one. Twenty-one, and we'll take it through the end of the chapter. chapter it's, 121. Yeah, one twenty-one, all the way through to um, the last verse, twenty thirty-two. Does anybody want to read that? Okay. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the mortal God for images, made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the, in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served and, and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts, even though women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were in front of the gospel one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves a due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of <coughs> murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanderers, god eaters, insol insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are sen senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree, that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do everything, 
to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So, <clears throat> when we look at this, is Paul talking about that. Who was he talking about? He was talking, when he was talking about people who knew God. Sodom and Gomorrah knew God. Now, also remember that they were also saved by the hand of Abraham. So they know, they knew, so the people of Sodom and Gomorrah knew who Lot was, they knew who Lot was, they knew Abraham, they knew the God, and at one time, they all practiced and they knew God. Because that guard, it was the garden who, who blessed them. God did. So, what we did, we look at the same thing, like the day of the coming of the Lord, so will it be, like it says, and remember Lot's wife. He tells us to remember like the days of Noah, it'll come suddenly, remembers Lot, Lot's wife, okay? So we see that. So, and what did he say? They gave him over to a depraved mind. So what we're seeing here is a picture of what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And notice, there's a time when God passes judgment. Remember before I went down and heard the cries because the sin was so grievous. What he's saying to see if it's time. Yeah. yeah, with an outrage. It was time because why? And that's what we're going to look at. When do we know when God's judgment is coming, okay? <clears throat> Go to um, Revelation chapter 2. Uh, 20 through 22. Never, 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 nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I've given her time to repent of her immor immorality, but she is unwilling. So, cast her on a bed of salt. So, um, suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her intensely, uh, suffer intensely unless they repent of their ways. So we see right here, this church he was referring to, they were unwilling to what? Repent. repent. Go to another one, Revelation chapter 9. Verse. 20 through 21. Is there a 22? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the works of their hand. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold and silver, bronze, stone, and wood idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, <clears throat> their sexual immorality, or their thefts. So they were, even after, remember... Now, and, now, 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 just so we have a clarity of this. Huh? Uh, by this time here, by this time in Revelation, that's a good point. In this time in Revelation, after the seals, it says very clear, they know there's their judgments of God in Revelation, yet they still refuse to repent. In the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, at one time knew God, and they still refused to repent. Remember, they were saved not very long before this, within that within a short time, because Lot's still alive, right. that they were saved out of the hand from Abraham, that they knew from Abraham's God, because if you remember, Melchizedek, the kings came out, right. and Melchizedek, okay? Right. So they know, they knew, see what I'm saying? They knew who he was, and the God he served, and they knew it was under his protection. See? But in this typical, what we see, we're in a blessed, same thing we see here. We're in a blessed country, same word. But yet, we might see the things of God, but yet we still refuse to repent. Okay? Remember, God wishes for no man to perish, but all to come to repentance. But there's a time for judgment. Now we see a principle here. There's a time in Sodom and Gomorrah for judgment. Remember Lot's wife. That's what we said. Like in the days of Noah. So Christ brings us back even to this story to look at. At the coming of the man, it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be like... So he's telling us, when we look at the story, is this what you see? Because, look up, your redemption is near. Okay, that's why, and that's something from the beginning. Remember, he tells, what does he tell Abraham? Should I reveal this to Abraham or my servant? And this is what he's doing to us, where he's revealing to us. Read my word and you'll know. Look around, you'll know when the time's getting near. Okay, this is one, you know, we're always looking for just earthquakes. And so that's all great and dandy, but there's also more to it than that. Right. Their morality that's going on. <clears throat> Sodom and Gomorrah, when, when he showed up, it wasn't about earthquakes and all those other things. These prophecies we look at, there was a lifestyle, unrepentant life. Moral compass says laughing. Uh, uh, moral compass says laughing. There was a lifestyle. There was nothing there. All right? Um, all right, so back in Genesis.
In the verse 1, he said, The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. All right? So, we see two angels, okay? Um, go to Matthew 13. Real quick, Matthew 13. Um, 40 through 43. <clears throat> remember, there were three men. Now Jesus took off, right? Remember, he told them what's going to happen. He's not here. It's two angels that showed up. Okay, and just, now what do we see in Matthew 13 here? As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Okay, they will throw them into a fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. Isn't that something that Christ, who gives this, this parable, we see the same contrast back here in Sodom and Gomorrah. He uses angels. The right? Same thing. We see he has two angels. He uses angels here to weed, remember? Now what would he weed? What would he weed? The righteous. Right, but why, does, why do they have to do any weeding? Because there might be some amongst them that were... Righteous, and what do we see here? What did he say? If there's any righteous, please, Lord, don't write. So they're going into here to say, but if there's anybody righteous, otherwise, why would he send angels? He just, I'm just going to, that's it. Right. He's going to rescue, because he comes to rescue his people. Outside of that, right? So, um, all right. So then what we see is when the, when the men arrive, right? Back in Genesis. Back in Genesis, I'm sorry, 19. When the men arrive, where do we find Lot? Sitting at the gateway. And what that means, what, the, what that's relative to, means he now has become a civil leader. Okay? So I want to see, show you the progression of Lot. If you go back to 13, Genesis 13.10. So Lot became a civil Yeah. So remember he went there. Huh? Of the city? Yeah, he's one of the civil leaders. Now he's among them, like a civil leader. That's why he's greeting him. That's how it was done in those days. Sitting at the gateway wasn't mean he was just hanging out there. He was a, a, like a civil servant. You know what I'm saying? He was high up now. He was actually in the... In the community, well known in the community. So now he becomes known in the community. All right? This is very interesting for us when we look. Remember, when you, if you look before we know if Peter said, you look at Lot and said, this isn't a righteous man at all. But God said he was righteous. So we got to find, we're going to look, we need to look at the story of Lot here, okay? Um, 13. 13, 10. says, Lot looked up. Remember, remember, um, there was a problem between him and Abraham. Remember that, and Lot wanted to move on because he was only being by sight, but not by faith. He said, "Look and choose whatever you want." And what did he do? So Lot looked up and saw that the whole plain of Jordan was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt toward um, toward Zor. This was before the Lord Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So the first thing we see that he started by looking toward Sodom. We see the first thing Lot does. Okay. First thing, yeah. First, and then he progresses. If you look at 13, uh, 13, 12, all right, in the same chapter, 13, 12, Abraham lived in Canaan. Uh, Abraham, uh, where am I at? Abraham lived in the land of Canaan. While Lot lived among the cities of the plains and pitched his tent uh, near Sodom. Okay, now the men of Sodom were wicked and they were sinning greatly against the Lord. So, we see a progression. He started by looking toward Sodom, then he pitched his tents toward Sodom. Alright? And then, um, in 14, 1412, they also carried off Lot's nephew in his possession since he was living in Sodom. So, so he starts off, this is how it all starts. Okay, we're looking at Lot. He was a compromising, what we look at as a compromising Christian. We need to look at Lot. as a, That's how he is. Because God says he was righteous, so we can have to count him as righteous. And what that means. So he started off by what? First he did what? He looked toward Sodom. He picked, right? So he looked for it, and then he said, I like Then he did what? He pitched his tent there. Uh -huh. then, he started, started, then he lived there. Now, I want to do the contrast. Go to Psalms chapter 1. This is exactly what can happen to us if we're not careful. Oh, 
Psalm chapter 1. I'm going to contrast it. Okay? Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of the sinners, or sit in the seat of the mockers. Okay? The three things Lot ended up doing. He compromised, and just like right here, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the sinners, and sit, or sit in the seat, and he ended up doing all three. See how he did? First, what did he do right here? The man <clears throat> doesn't walk in the council, then he doesn't stand, and then he ends up sitting. See? Walked, stand, and sit, because now I'm comfortable. That's what he did. I looked, set my tent, and then I ended up living. That's how it happens when we get involved into the world. So Lot was attracted to the world, and just by an eye, and it's the exact same thing we're seeing. See the, see the contrast? You start, hmm, I start in the council listening to it, next thing I know, I'm standing with them, hanging out with them, next thing I know, I'm sitting with them. Right? See the contrast? Okay? So, yeah, this can happen. Uh, definitely to us. <clears throat> uh, back in Genesis. Now, um, we also have to be aware, too, you know, when you look at this, Lot was aware, very aware, what kind of sin was going on. So we can't look at it like Lot didn't know what's going on. No, very, so he knew exactly what was going on. As soon as right. you know, like he brushed them into his house to keep people away from him, and then people started coming, he knew what was up. Exactly. He knew what was up. No, well, not only that, he knew what was up before. And not only that, if you look at verse 7, look at verse 7, 19. Yeah, 19. Um, he refers to them as friends. Okay, other translations he calls them brothers. So, like I said, he, he ended up being he knew the homosexual activity. You'll see that as he wrote, he knew what they were. He knew the sin was going on there. Okay, but he would just kind of turn an eye to it. In fact, he refers to them as friends. So he be, became associate an association within sinners. That's what he did. He associated with them. We all have to hang out. With, you know, you, you might in your workplace, but he became friends of them. Okay, that's what he said. He referred to them as friends. Okay, and you got to remember, look, how many were righteous? If you find ten righteous, there wasn't ten righteous there. So how many friends did he have? Point. See what I'm saying? Who were his friends? Okay. Well, now, now, here's my question for that. Uh -huh. is, it, is it on that end, or is it the fact that he knew who, who, the, who the angels were? In other words, he, he didn't know that. yet. That's, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah, at this point here, okay, now when he said he bowed down, he didn't bow down because they were angels. He bowed down because that was customary. See, that's what I was going to ask you. Right. Okay. He bowed down because it's probably been, you understand what he said, as he sees these men come in, he bowed down because it's customary. That's what he did. He refers to him as Lord. So that would be a word for sir. Yeah. There's a high respect. Well, you got to remember, in the Jewish culture, this is very important to understand that, the guest in certain things, the guest was huge. That's what we're going to look at here. Why does he do some of these things? That's, in those, even now, that's a big deal. There's a big deal that you are more safe. Okay, if you go to like Saudi Arabia and some of these other countries like that, even if you're their enemy, if, if the host invites you himself, you are 100% protected. No matter if your enemy sitting in that room, they cannot touch you. Those people will put their life in. That's how high regard they do this. It's, part of, it's still part of the culture. Okay, that's how they were. This is how it was in those days. Okay. It's like an honorary guest. Like it's like yeah, but it's beyond anything. We, we don't even experience something like this, okay? So you got so we see that. And it's probably been a while since he's seen anybody of, of uh, a righteous type. You know what I'm talking about? You know, now let's think about it. These are eight. At this point here, we'll see. He doesn't know they are. But they're probably, if you recall back in Genesis, um, the angels we referred to were attractive. They're probably attractive men. Okay. You have a mob after him. That's the kind of things that are probably attractive, you know what I'm saying? So there was something about him, you know, they probably had some, he must have recognized that they were righteous people, okay? Okay, so we reckon we'll know that because you can see as we go on, okay? Verse 2, my lords, he said, please turn us, um, um, my lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. All right? Um, see, Lot at this point doesn't realize they're angels because does an angel need to be... See, a lot what he realizes is this. As customers, they said, oh, we'll spend the night. One thing I want you to notice, angels said no. no. Why would they say no? Because they yeah. wanted to experience the people. No, that's not why. Why do you think? I think it's because they're not accepting of, of who Lot is. There you go. Right? They weren't... Their invitation, when they weren't... Didn't, Lot didn't meet their approval. Right. Okay? They were a compromise, he was a compromised Christian. 
The so bison. They were rejecting that. No. They were, there was a flat out no. Okay, it was customary. Now, see, this is what I'm trying to say. We got to put this in context. They're going to hang out in the square. Now, just like now, nobody else offers it. See, Lot knew, he knew what these people would do if you just hang out in the square, if you're in, okay? Yeah. Just like if, you went to, if we went and hung out in uh, Central Park in New York and you were a stranger there, right. other people who didn't know you will come up, dude, you're not from here, huh? Right. You might want not here. Let me take you, right? Point. It's the right. same thing, okay? They might not do that to somebody they know because they already know. But to a stranger, even, even to most strangers, people say, uh, you're not from here, huh? Yeah, you shouldn't be hanging out here. Right. Know, that's what Lot was saying, okay? Right. And they refused his help. Now, we know their angel. He doesn't know that. Why do we know that? Very simple. Does an angel need their help? No. And if he knew their angels, would he have had to offer that? Good point. See? Right. Of course not. We'll see that later on. Okay? He, has, he doesn't know what's going on yet. All right? So the fact is he doesn't know. Um, and um, if go to Hebrews chapter 13, 1 and 2. Okay, Karen, will you read that for me? One and two. Uh-huh. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Very cool. This is probably a reference here to Hebrew, and Paul who was probably referring to this, we, most people, uh -huh. scholars figure. As, and the point of this is, is um, we never know when God might send a uh, messenger or a person. Remember, an angel also can be a messenger. We don't know. That's to say, you never know. He didn't know in judgment. Obviously, he didn't know. And the question is, these two people, he didn't know who they were. Isn't that something? Yeah. And where was he at when judgment was coming? Sin. Right, he was living in the city where he was just a civil leader now among them, okay? Even though he's found righteous. And go to, uh, and I want you to go to 1 John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 28. Hey, Ryan, read that for me. Chapter 2. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, you may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. So what he's saying is that these two angels show up. Here he was. He, you know, he welcomes in his house. They didn't even recognize who they are. And, where, and when the angels are given for judgment, when God shows up, where are we going to be? And that's what John's talking about here. When Christ shows up, are you going to be ashamed? Are you going to be in a place where you shouldn't be? Because the simple fact is, you've got to remember, we're not saved by our works. Okay, You can, as Christians, be doing some things that ain't right when God shows up. And we have this idea that, oh, and you know, no. The simple fact is, is that um, we could be ashamed of what, oh my gosh, I, you know, and that's the exact same thing we're seeing here. As a matter of fact, go to verse, back in Genesis, go to verse 3. Verse 3, or chapter verse three not, um, Genesis 19, verse 3. It says, but he insisted so strongly that they did, they, they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men... No, we'll, we'll just go over right there. We'll start with verse 3. Okay, he starts out in, in the East. Usually when we see East, it's talking about evil. This isn't a reference here. Actually, the... the, the uh, That's customary, right? Well, usually with leaven, there was the, the meal that was prepared. We saw the meal prepared without leaven. Okay, when we see it with the um, uh, angelic, usually angelically. We saw it in Judges. When it comes that... Because in the... In the, in the in, uh, Jewish culture, remember, leaven represents evil. But that's not the word he's using here, okay? That's not why he didn't make it that way. Actually, the word here in the Hebrew is masa, which means bread made in haste. Oh, okay. okay? So the reason he didn't use yeast, you got to remember that law hadn't been done yet, because he wasn't prepared. Right. He wasn't prepared for his guest. Wow. He wasn't prepared for that time when the judgment was coming. So all of a sudden, he sees this. Oh, now it was customary that here's the thing. It was customary that somebody came in that I'm going to bring him in my house under my roof that nothing happened. But he wasn't even prepared for that. Why? Because probably nobody ever righteous, huh? Okay. So it's kind of like it's the same thing. Um, but we're not prepared. We're not prepared sometimes because we haven't been in the throne of God for a while. Okay. We don't pray. We haven't gotten the word of God. But okay. And then when trouble comes our way, 
We want God to come eat with us. Right? But we're not prepared. And that's the same thing. They showed it, they showed up. He wasn't even prepared. He's sitting there, he's sitting there, who are these guys? Oh, oh, here, uh, oh, here, come on in. You know, there was nothing, there was no pre preparation. That's what I mean, made in haste. Real quickly, instead of, so are we prepared? When things come in our life, are we prepared? See, that's the whole thing. Or do we throw in at the last minute, real quick, here, Lord, uh, yeah, now I want you to come eat with me. And the, just like the angels, so they were in disapproval. So of now your... one of the pictures that we have is Abraham, who was prepared. Right. Right? Who invited him in. Right. To feed everyone. Right. Right. And then you have the picture of, uh, of Lot, who right. was unprepared entirely. Mm -hmm. And had to throw some nets. That's why I like that. Really and then, and, then our, and like I said, in our life, you know, we, we want... And there's a time, you know, this, this is very, you know, you've got to look at this. It's just like us as Christians. Here we are. It's the same thing. He wasn't prepared. Just like we're not prepared. Like I said, we don't go to the throne of God. I'm talking personal, direct time with God. You know, we don't, we don't get into our, the Word of God. We don't do all this stuff. And then we're, we get away from God. Just like a lot of it's very easy to get away from God. And then, like I said, struggles come our way. And then, oh, I need God now. God, come eat with me. I'm not prepared. I start trying to put everything together yet. In fact, and now it's now it's the time of judgment. Lot wasn't even looking for him. Ah, oh, he wasn't even Lot looking for him. Abraham. Remember, Abraham was looking for him. Right. See, and when he came, like I said, they, what, so what would you feel? Like I said, when when if Christ shows up, will you feel shame? Right. Where are you going to be when Christ shows up? See, there's some people who want to teach that when Christ shows up for the rapture, if you're not living a right life, you're not going to rapture. No. Well, I'm saved by I'm saved by grace, not by by works. That's not true. If I'm found righteous, I go no matter what. But how do you want to be found? That's what he says, look for, the, look for me. Why, 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 why is Christ so interested? Live your day as if, as if I'm coming tomorrow. Why does he tell you that? Because when I arrive, be prepared. Okay? Be prepared for me. Okay? Do you want to go in the presence of me? You know what I'm saying? When you're living a life that you shouldn't have been, you know, outside of my will? No, we're not talking, you know, there's a difference. We're going to get look more into this. We're not talking about somebody who's a sinner. We're talking about a compromising Christian. That's what Lot is. He's a compromiser. Like most of us are. Okay? That's what's good about the story when we look at a lot. Okay? Um, verses 4 back in um, Genesis chapter 4 and 5. I mean, verses 4 and 5. Read that for me, Care. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. So, now here, here's, here's the thing right there. So when people try to deny about it, it's very clearly the grievous sin is what? Homosexuality. And what else did you notice about that? Young and old. So it's generational. Okay? So it wasn't just happened overnight. It's when the sins came. Now it was passed down even to their kids. It became generational. So it's like, um, remember in Judges, when we talked about last, last week in Judges, they'd forgotten, okay? They were, okay, so like so Sodom was, Abraham brought his children up in the things of the Lord. Sodom and Gomorrah brought their people up in the things of evil. So their children were brought up in evil. Generational, right? The generation passed on the sins of the Father. In fact, like go to Deuteronomy 5, 9, and 10. That's what Deuteronomy, that's what it's talking about when we're talking about, um... Deuteronomy 5? Uh-huh. Verses 9 and 10. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, and am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. All right? So what's he referring to there? that the sins of the fathers are passed on to the children, so therefore, because they're passed on and not trained there, they suffer my punishment. So, and like this, now remember, it's only been 450 years. Remember, in Judges, they've forgotten who God was. By this generation, these, maybe the kids there never even heard of God. At one time, Sodom and Gomorrah heard about God. They knew who God was. Now it's become generational, and sin has become so grievous. And when it says all, all four corners, actually in the Hebrew... If you really look awful, according, pretty much tells you what, what it's saying is that every man in there was gay. Every man was homosexual. I don't say the word gay. Or at least bisexual. That's what it's a reference to. Every quadrant doesn't mean it just came from everywhere. It means it was so grievous that everybody was homosexual and homosexual activity, whether from bisexual at least. Okay? So that's how bad it's come. And, and it's been generational. 
all right? And you can see, that, look how bad it became, okay? So we got to look at, look what's going on in our country. Look what's going on in the world. And people are just starting to, hey, this is fine. And they get mad at you if you say anything, okay? It's kind of funny you know, when we read the same kind of same kind of stuff going on here, huh? Like in the days of Noah, people carry on. This isn't going to happen. We'll see that, right? Um, go to verses back in back in um, Genesis six through eight. Read that for me, Karen. Six through eight. Okay, now this this is really now this is kind of this is really this there's a lot to this. Now one thing when he said it's funny he says shut the door he brings that 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 shows again the dividing between the wicked and the righteous just like we've seen many times. Very interesting all this purpose. He shut the door behind him. The righteous are not included in with the wicked. Okay, shows that everything on that side of the door was wicked. Okay, now another thing too it shows that that Lot was willing to protect his guests. Okay, and he was very aware of what they would do to him. Okay, that's important to, for us to kind of see. Now, it does say, this is kind of, there's different theories. We it doesn't say why he gave, you know, why he would, there's different reasons why he would give up his daughter. Remember, one thing we need to understand, before pre-Christian time, women were nothing. They meant nothing. Okay, I mean, they were, they were, you're just a, a, a property. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can do what you want. We see that all through through the Bible. So you got to remember that that there there wasn't anything like a culture. Now. It was only actually you know it was only you know um, Christ is the one that gave liberty to the women. He showed them the equality of women being equal with men spiritually. Okay, but before that, before pre-Christian, it was never like that for women. And that's so one thing you got to remember that when we're reading these stories. Okay, so the women were like they were not you know they were less than your guests. So there's th there's three things we can look at. Um, Okay, Lot could have done this. He could have put his guest. All right, this shows you how grievous the sin is and him being around it. Okay, his guests ahead is, um, were more important than his daughters. Okay, that he was being willing to to give his daughters up. Number two is I think Lot he even says it's a wicked it's a wicked thing. He he knows it's a wicked thing. Well, what they were going to do? No, what does it say in verse um, eight? Says, uh, Look. Uh, um, Lot went outside to meet them, shut the door behind them, and said, "No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing to the to the strangers." Remember, so he knew what they were going to do was wicked. Okay, no, they're under my roof. You can't do this. Okay, now if you notice right there at this point, he still doesn't know. He doesn't understand they're angels yet. Why we didn't have to protect no angel? We'll see that. Okay, no, my friend, and you know, say refers to friends. What's important about that? Why didn't they do this to Lot? Because he's different. see, they knew a lot was shows he's high up in the, okay, right. he's high up there. They knew a lot. They could have raped a lot. Right. Okay, they could have done all that. Why didn't they do a lot? And then when he offers daughters, another reason maybe why he might have realized, knowing that they're homosexuals, they're not having no desire for my daughters. Right. Notice he says they're two virgins, highly wanted. Right. But they didn't say that we don't even want them. Right. It's very possible. That's another conclusion he could have done. You know what I'm saying? I'm more prone. To believe because what was found righteous. You got to remember, just because he's living, there, he was found righteous. Okay, it doesn't say when that he participated in their sins. Even know he might have done some. In other words, he wasn't homosexual. Okay, because remember, simple fact is, nor does the homosexual in the kingdom of God. The Bible doesn't contradict the Bible. If he was a drunkard or if he was in their wickedness of their wickedness, he wouldn't be in. Okay, but the point is this: we can be compromising as Christians. And still be a Christian, and that's a, a lot here. That's personally how I, I I believe that lot. Okay, I don't think he was just going to throw his. Even though we do see, his, there's like a story in. We're not going to read that in Judges. If you ever want in Judges 14, you guys can read that where they did that. Where they threw the woman out. He offered his daughters and his and his wives, and they raped him outside to keep his guests. Because when it says um um oh another reason too that you'll see later. Is, he was hoping maybe that his potential son-in-laws is referred a son-in-law here. They weren't actual son-in-laws. When you were um, to get married and you're engaged, that was not like nowadays. That's the same thing as you have to get divorced to get out of engagement. They just haven't had sex yet. In other words, they haven't deferred. But when you become engaged, okay, it was the same. It was just as bound as right. So the right. It's it's 
the only way that can't happen, you had to do the same thing. You had to be divorced. Right. Okay, the same thing. It wasn't like they just haven't confirmed it yet, you know, right. the relationship. That's all. So when he's referring to son-in-law, they weren't actually, that's why they were virgins. Gotcha. See, so how could they be virgins or son-in-law? So just sort of clear that up so you understand. So he, it could be, too, he was hoping that they were in the crowd, right. the son-in-laws, and that they might stop this. So we don't know. It doesn't give the exact reason to why. Personally, I believe it's very possible that he realized that, look, he knew that they're all homeless. Don't just think, I'll offer you my two daughters. Right. Okay? But because when, it's, when it goes on in... Um, uh, if we go back in Genesis. Uh, but don't do it. Uh, verse 8 again says, Let me bring them out to you, and you can do what, what them will like, like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. See, this, this stuff over us is really kind of weird for us to understand what that means. You see, that means you came under, um, under the shadow of God's wings, is what that word means in the Hebrew. So it was huge. They would, and it was customary for them. It, it was more important for their guests and their custom than it was for your own family, sons or anybody. That's how it was. Their custom, pretty weird, huh? Okay. So it, maybe that's what Lot was. Maybe he was willing, willing to do that. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but that's it was very important to him. Okay. He wasn't. Excuse when you can read this and we read it, we're thinking he's trying to protect, you know, these kids are angelic angels. Well, he doesn't need to protect it. No. That was the custom. It didn't matter who it was, okay, he knew this was gonna happen to him. It's my job under the wings right now, will even sacrifice my daughters. Okay. You see? So now now you also remember, even if he was willing to do that, you see how he's compromised, willing to loot um have your daughters over these to save these men? Your daughter, they're putting things ahead of your family. It's not even the arrangement of God's order. Right. See what I'm saying? So those are things for us to look at. Um, verse 9. It says, Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, This fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They, keep bringing pressure, they kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. Okay, now, um, to begin with, what I, what I picked up on this is that it's funny how they referred to him as a foreigner. Okay, he's a civil leader, he's among them, and they refer to him as a foreigner. And this is, when you look at this, is exactly the same kind of stuff as us. So here they didn't attack, they didn't attack him, he's a foreigner, they didn't attack him. They tell him, you know what, Lot, we know who you are. Here's the foreigner, who are you? Why? Why would he be a foreigner? Why would they come to this foreigner? Because no matter how much as Christians we get in the world, we're like foreigners here. Let's go to watch. Go to Philippians chapter 3. I'll show you what I'm saying. Philippians 3. What did I say? Yeah, Philippians 3. 3, 17 through 21. You want to read that for me, Karen? Yeah. 17 through 21? Uh-huh. Uh, Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their, their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So, just like he was concerned for sure we said, no matter how much you get in the world, if you're truly a child of God, that's what you are, you're a foreigner. And so they recognized that. Why? See, there was something different about Lot. Get out of our way. You're just a foreigner. Okay? Now, yeah, they could be referring to us, but he's, he's a civil leader. So now they're referring to him as a, a foreigner. You're not really one of us, but yet we put you in our council. You know saying? Now, we all can experience that. You ever try to get in the world and you feel uncomfortable. Okay? If you look in Revelation, it talks about, you know, the, the things coming upon the people of the earth. We're not considered earth dwellers. When the Bible refers to earth dwellers, you're not. You're a citizen of heaven. You're not an earth dweller. You're just visiting here. You're just visiting. Regardless of when we try to get in the world. So they recognize. See, no matter what, okay, because when we're reading Peter, and we'll get to that later, when we read Peter, he felt tormented by the sin around him. That's what it said. Lot was tormented, okay, because I'm a foreigner. 
Okay? And if you're a foreigner, here's another thing. Does a foreigner not stand out? Oh, so if they call him a foreigner, he must have stood out. So there's a couple things we need, we need to look at here. You can look at, he was a compromising, well, look, it looks like he's a sinner. First thing, Lot, what he did is he tried to protect him. There's the fruit of something right there. He wasn't with the wicked and what they're going to do. Okay? That's the fruit. Sometimes we have to, it's hard to find fruit. But we see that he wasn't, he didn't, wasn't willing to participate in their wickedness. He was willing to die for them. Okay? He's willing to give anything up for them. Okay? We see that. So there, so when we look, yeah, a lot was a righteous man. He didn't even, he wasn't willing to, to do that. And they referred him as a foreigner. So they recognized something. Okay? Also, they, they call him, a, um, if you look back in there, Uh, what verse was I on? Nine, right? And, uh, and now he wants to play the judge. All right? Um, go to Acts chapter 7. Isn't this what we hear right nowadays? Don't you judge me. You're just a foreign. Who are you? So now, see what's that? So now, what, 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 that's another thing. Um, um, we have to recognize if, if Lot if Lot does this, he's, he's judging. He's telling them what they're doing is wrong. It's evidence too that Lot probably tried witnessing these people, even though he put himself in there. He was witnessing to them. This is you know what I'm saying. Look, we're tired of you. The same thing. They just come out here and judge. He's been telling them, look, this is wicked, just like we would do as Christians. Now it wasn't that's it was compromised, obviously. But so there's evidence there. There's evidence that you know even among them he did that. And now it's just like what we hear. You mentioned, look, what this is you know. Uh, this is a sin against God. Who are you to judge me, right? That's the same thing. And look, it angers him. It's so bad, it angers him, just like it does now. It angers him so bad, if you don't move out of the way, you alien came in here, we're going to do worse to you than we are these people because you're passing judgment on me. And here's a friend. Think about that. See, isn't that something? How, okay? And then it sounds just like some of the stuff we see nowadays. Acts chapter 7, 23 through 27. It says, when Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But, uh, but the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? <laughs> See, isn't that typical? His own people, his own, he's telling them, look, you know, he's witnessing, look, this is what God's called. And who made you the judge? And that's exactly, so everything we see is the exact same thing. You know, all of a sudden friends, but now when it's confronted, okay, we're in the road, you confront them about it, I'm going to do to you exactly what's happening to the Christians right now. They're silencing you. Okay? They've done nothing wrong. Okay? But we will do worse to you, you know, than we will to... And this is a Christian country we see this stuff. Yeah. Alright? Um, and remember what it says in, in, um, in, in John 15. You know, Christ says, they'll hate you because they hated me first. Simple fact. As soon as you raise your voice to any uh, sin like that as Christians, okay? Alright? This is exactly what's going to happen. We're going to behave. And then you got to remember, he's sitting here, you know, especially, yeah, this is exactly what we all say. Who are you? What kind of judge? You're just, look, you're sitting here amongst us. You're compromised. You could tell me this is sin. Okay? He's a compromised believer telling these people that it's sin. But there's evidence of the fruit that the simple fact is when it came down to it, look, I'm not with you. Okay? There's no way. This is sin. What you're doing, okay? He went on. And then they recognized it. They even called him alien. So they knew there's something different. We've all done that. You can try to get in. If you truly have the Holy Spirit and you can get in around the world and there's something different about you and people recognize it, they won't even accept you. Only to a certain degree, but when it comes down to your belief, you bring your belief in, you watch how you're an alien. And people recognize it. Okay? So even on compromised belief, there has to be a fruit. Christ says, you'll know them by their fruit. Okay? So we, we understand. But sometimes it's just harder to, to find the fruit, just like it was a lot. Okay? Because when you found righteous, there had to be some fruit. And so we've already seen some of that. All right. Uh, verses 10 and 11, back in... Karen, will you read that for me? 10 and 11? Uh-huh. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they 
struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could not find the door. <coughs> okay, now, I'll, I'll, I'm going to read that to you out of the SV because this is very interesting. It, it, it says it a little well, different. I was a while. Huh? Well, no, but watch this. In verses 10 and 11, out of the ESV, it says it more like this. It's more exacting. Um, let me find it here. Nine. Um, but the men reached out their hands. Okay, they're talking about the angels. He's still in other angels. And brought light into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck them with blindness. So what did they do? They struck them with a temporary blindness, not blind. We'll look, the word is a temporary blindness. We're going to look at that. The men who were at the entrance of the house, both great and small, so that they wore themselves out, groping for the door. So what does that mean? I want you to think about this. Their sin became so grievous, even when, and we're going to look at this, when they're blinded, they still went for the door, not with fear. They're still, so they get blinded, these two men, these angels, blind them, and they're still, I still want, see, I'm so, I'm so depraved, with my homosexual activity, in my, in my, they're still groping for the door. What's the first ever mention of zombies? <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, like but these are, but this isn't. And we're gonna look at this. This is temporary blindness. Now, I want this is okay. Don't you find that very interesting? Yes. It wasn't like, in other words, if you got blinded, you would think it put fear. No fear. They kept going on because it wasn't, it, it wasn't like a second. It's beyond. Yeah, they, and and jelly beans came. Flash blindness on, and they didn't care. They still, I'm still going to get. See, try to do this. You know what I'm saying? They're so depraved, beyond. Okay, the exact kind of things we're seeing right now. We don't care. We're still going to do anything to get to these men. All right. Go to um, uh, real quick to John chapter three. And I find it interesting the fact that he, they shut the, he shut the door first, and then he did it. Uh huh. You know, so. That was the men. Yeah. The men they shut the door. Okay. The angel, right? Chapter John. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Kind of. It's it's the idea of a separation. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, but remember, at first he's doing what he thought. He didn't recognize who they were. They didn't really feel that he'll know now. He's going to come up. And, he's going to start to know now. Okay. So John chapter three, nineteen and twenty-one. Okay. Remember, they were blinded. It was a temporary blindness, and this is what it says. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Wow, isn't that something? Okay, Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. So here, and that's something what's going on right there. The the light of the world comes in, and just like that, they were so blinded, the darkness is so dark to them, even the light, and when they're blinded by the light, they don't care, because their evil deeds are so evil. And that's when God's judgment starts to come. See, there's evil in the world, but now, what happened? The whole, remember we saw? All the quadrants, everybody started doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. See? There wasn't a single one. Right. Well, there was, we know, a lot. And we'll see his family, we'll look at that. But see what I'm saying? From all four quadrants, see, it starts spreading. And it was so grievous at the point, remember we started off, they wouldn't repent. As a matter of fact, when the angels, the light, that would be the light of God, they still, I mean, imagine, God, the light of God, I'd be like freaking out. Right. They didn't drop their knees or nothing. It's like, they were still groping for the door. Right. Isn't that something? That's That kind of depravity, no matter what, I'm still groping. So they're still going, trying to get to these men. You know, uh, you try to get that picture, you know what I mean? When you look at that, you know, when you look at it that way. Back in, um, Those, same thing, yeah. Really uh-huh. Um, actually, let's go to, yeah, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 while we're on that. Ephesians chapter 4. Um, e 4, 17 through 19. <clears throat> Ryan, read that for me, will you? Still trying to find it. Okay. All right, go ahead. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sens sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. See? 
and that exactly what's going on there. There's a point where they lost all sense. There's nothing even bothers them. They have no conscience of their sin. And then if you go to Revelation 22, I'll go ahead and read that if you want. Revelation 22, 10 through 11, it says, Then he told, then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the, uh, the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him, let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do what is right, and let him who is holy continue to be holy. And what's he making a referring to? It's just like them, no matter what, the light, they will continue all the time, even in hell, to be vile. They will never repent ever of their sin. And that's at the point when God passes judgment. When there's, he doesn't wish for any to perish. God's not going to pass judgment on this world if there's anybody left to repent. Okay? And just like Sodom and Gomorrah, I remember he, Jesus made a reference, look at Lot's wife. Okay, he brings, he brings us to Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, this is when judgment is coming. There's a time it became so grievous that I'm going to pass judgment. And when we look, how close do you think we're getting to that? Very close. Okay, now I want you to understand, you know, remember, look, it's generational. Are we getting generational? That's what we're seeing. That's right, we're starting to see generational. Okay, the sin's becoming generational. Back in Genesis... Um, <clears throat> yeah, how long have I been going? Um, well, this, I think this is it right here. We'll still do. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to finish up right here through. Um, we'll just finish up these two verses 12 through 14. The two men said to Lot, <clears throat> Do you have anyone else here, son in laws? Um, uh, first, back in 11, then, then they struck them in. Who were at the door with uh, young and old, the blindness. The, well, I want you to notice there that the judgment is coming. It doesn't matter who you are, young or old. They're all unrepentant. They're all getting judgment. You know this idea that only to know, young and old, anybody who was involved in that, who was there, okay, they're getting judgment because they would none of them would repent. Even the young ones, none, none of them would. Okay, the two men said to Lot, uh, "Do you have anyone else?" Anyone else here? Son-in-laws, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belong to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. Now they, now he understood. They're trying to. Now he understands. Okay, this was going on. He didn't know they're coming for judgment. Think about it. He didn't realize. Now these two angels show up. He's telling them, this is what we're here for. We're here to destroy this. Okay. That's a lot. Oh. Uh huh. Because we're going. Because we're going to destroy this place. The outcry. The the outcry to the Lord against His people is so great. That he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out. And spoke to his son-in-laws, who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, "Hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city." But his son-in-laws thought he was joking. So now, why would they do that? Why would they think he's joking? I can't imagine because they saw the, the men become blind. Uh huh. So he had to go out and find them. Yeah, he had to go out and find them, yeah, right? They were but part of that. well, no, they could have been because that's the same for Mary Quadro. Believers, is, 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 <laughs> and not only that. He, yeah, obviously, right. obviously they weren't believers. Really, well, that's part of this whole thing. Not only that, why would they? So they knew who Lot was. They knew what he represented. And when he told them, they didn't believe what he said. He's like, oh, we think that why? He's compromised. Nobody's gonna believe you, right. because now, so part of his compromising, people weren't saved because of Lot. Right. So he goes. So in other words, they would have taken him serious if he didn't have a compromised life. Right. But it's like, uh huh, sure you are. And I want to go. to We're gonna finish up. But, <laughs> Uh, was Second Peter? Yeah, they thought he was joking. Uh huh. Sure. Second Peter. That's that's bad. It says joking. It means that they're laughing at him. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. And and, and Second Peter chapter three. And think about it. you know he's been he's talked to him, he witnessed to him. You know what I'm saying? And all this, but you know they they realize that you know he's a compromiser. Why would we believe anything you say? You know what I'm saying? You don't even follow what you. Right. You know I mean you do to he obviously did to to degree. We know he's been found righteous. But he obviously didn't, mom, right, man. exactly, you know what I'm saying? Well, because he was obviously, he was living in the world. He compromised. So the compromised believer, what happens? Nobody's getting saved. They don't believe anything you say. Okay, um, chapter 3, 3 through 7. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But the, the deliberately forget long ago by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. 
By these waters also the world at that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destructive of ungodly men. So, he's saying in the last days, just like that, in the last days there's going to be people, yeah, sure, he's coming back, like we hear that. And we even have Christians that, because they've had such a watered down messages, it's like, sure, sure, when's he coming back? This is, or, or, or they just like Lot, they're looking around, I don't see anything wrong with our world. There's nothing wrong there. Look at God's head. But Jesus, what did he do? He pointed at us. He's telling you, look, these are signs of my coming. Just like in the days of Noah, okay? Remember Lot's wife. So that takes us back to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Huh. Kind of look at that. Now, but now we have a lot of compromising Christians that say, uh, there's no return of the Lord coming back right now. They're scoffing because why? Because they don't see the evil. They don't look at it as evil because of the watered down message. Just like Lot when he told his son-in-laws. That's just a watered down message. He never taught. See, they were never, they were never, remember how, what did um, Abraham do? They were brought and taught in the faith. Okay? These people lived a compromised belief, even though they might have been under his roof, brought and taught in the faith, under compromised faith, though. Just like we have now. Many people are going to heaven, Christian, okay? Many people will sit behind the pulpit, you know, that we look at as like, oh, that's a pretty weak message, or watering down the message. But, how many people aren't going to heaven because of their compromised, watered-down belief? Because people, as Christians, are saying, "This is." How many Christians are to think there's nothing wrong with what's going on? Well, they're calling themselves Christians. Okay, you can't sit there and try to say that um, um, evil is good and call yourself a Christian. That's not. And nor did Lot do that. We have to understand that he recognized good from evil. So one of the one of the fruit of even a compromising that you know, no, that's sin. No, I partake not in that. At this particular time, there was a there was a time even even as compromising. That's when they'll know, you know, a compromising believer. They'll separate. Even a compromising uh, as a compromising, you separate. There's a time you'll separate. So I won't get involved in that. You'll you'll know that that's that's not of God. Everybody who's compromised knows that. There's a time when in your heart even, uh, uh, you know, no more. no more. That's it. You can't compromise. That's the difference. So we'll leave it kind of there because there's a lot more to this. Okay. All right. Um,